gives us an opportunity to get more fine print on uh, the budget. But uh, as we've been pointing out through the course of the day, the budget has delivered on expectations. Uh, the big numbers coming in to recap for our viewers, of course, is the thrust on CapEx. The heavy lifting continues on the part of the government. 10 lakh crores, uh, that is the number that the budget has put on the table. The path to fiscal consolidation, no deviation from that, sticking to the glide path that has been articulated. Sub 6% for next year and 4.5% by FY26. And of course, uh, a cushion coming in by way of uh, lower subsidies. That is the estimate, both on account of food and fertilizer. Of course, the big thrust areas, the seven priority areas that have been articulated by the finance minister include things like uh, the urban infrastructure development and uh, the green energy transition. Joining us now to take us through what he made of budget 2023 is the CEO of the Niti Aayog. Niti, of course, works very closely with the government on putting policy together as well as in executing many of these policies. Mr. Ayer, many thanks for joining us. Uh, let me start by asking you for the big picture view, the helicopter view on what this budget has been able to do and how far it can move the needle for growth. Sure, uh, Shireen, glad to be with you. Well, as we saw from the economic uh, survey yesterday, you know, the recovery is complete. Uh, India, despite the global headwinds, and the situation post-COVID, uh, the Ukraine situation, we are still the fastest growing large economy in the world, 7% uh, growth rate, uh, inflation, uh, you know, under 6%. And uh, as the finance minister announced in the morning, I think the sound macroeconomic fundamentals. In terms of the budget itself, here are some of uh, my key takeaways. I think clearly, as the uh, finance minister and then the prime minister mentioned, this is a budget for all, uh, sarvangin vikas, if you like, you know, whether it's uh, for women, uh, for artisans, uh, vishwakarma, uh, youth, uh, the middle class, industry. So I think it sort of, uh, it's a very balanced budget. It meets all the requirements for inclusive growth. So that's the first big takeaway. I think the second important thing to note is in many ways, it, it's a bottom-up budget. It's not just trickle-down. Uh, I'll come to the capital expenditure in a minute. But if you look at uh, the whole cooperative federalism story, uh, working with states and going all the way down to districts and blocks. So the FM spoke about the aspirational block program, uh, the aspirational district program. This fits in very well with NITI state support mission. So I think that uh, it's a budget which is coming from below and catering to the requirements from that level. The third, of course, is the big push on CapEx, which you spoke about just now. 10 crores for capital expenditure in the coming year. And, you know, three times what was there three or four years ago. In addition to that is the, is the 1.3 lakh crores for states. Again, and, of course, incentivizing them for some reforms. The National Urban Infrastructure Fund. So I think there's a big push towards capital expenditure. Uh, there's been a significant increase, and that's going to give a huge impetus to growth and jobs and employment. I think the fourth point to note is that this is about, it's also about the hinterland. You know, uh, coastal areas through the mangrove plantation scheme, looking at hills, looking at development in uh, tier two and tier three cities. So it's taken care of the hinterland of the country. It's not just in the cities. Uh, rural areas are covered as well. And then, of course, I think one another important takeaway from my side is the shift. Uh, the FM spoke about moving from input-based to outcome-based and results-based financing. I think that's a very, very important signal. All the expenditure through centrally sponsored schemes, which are done by the government of India, if we take up a couple of uh, uh, on a pilot basis next year, how can we move to results-based financing? so that we actually get concrete outcomes as opposed to only focusing on expenditure. So I think that's a very, very important signal. Then, of course, it's the green growth, you know, through socioeconomic growth, through a green lens, whether it's energy, infrastructure, jobs, uh, the economy as a whole. I think that was a big thrust on that. And I think another important point I'd like to emphasize is the focus on human dignity. I think that was a very major point. You know, whether we're talking of uh, the PVTG, the particularly vulnerable tribal group, 15,000 crores for that. It's a big signal, SHGs. And then, of course, critically, 
uh, I like the phrase from manhole to machine hole, moving from, uh, you know, moving towards mechanical evacuation of waste in all cities. Another very, very important point. Agriculture, MSMEs, looking at the ecosystem, how are we going to empower them? Startups in agriculture. We have, as you know, more than 80,000 startups in India. Many of them are in the agricultural sector, and this will give them a boost as well. So I think overall, uh, many takeaways, uh, in addition to, of course, you know, what many people will talk about, income tax, uh, how it's gone up in the new tax regime, is moved up to 7 lakhs. But overall, key takeaway, it's, it's an gr inclusive growth budget with, I think, with uh, taking care of all sections of society and all stakeholders. Uh, an inclusive budget is how you would like to, uh, uh, to position Budget 2023, Paramayar. But if I could ask you specifically on the areas that NITI is working with the government and specifically on the aspect of states, uh, you know, whether it is to do with trying to push states to uh, utilize the uh, CapEx uh, allocated uh, and, you know, do some of the reforms that are linked to the CapEx allocation as well. I know that NITI is working closely with the states. Uh, the expenditure secretary said that the last two years have been an experiment of sorts in trying to get states to move down that path. Where do things currently stand? And if you can elaborate for me what the road ahead looks like on this front and where NITI steps in. Sure, Shireen. Uh, you know, the state support mission, which was referenced by the finance minister, is precisely focused on working with states to help them develop their own inclusive growth strategy and their own GDP targets. So on that count, whether it's asset monetization, uh, encouraging PPPs and infrastructure, that's all part of the plan. In addition to that, one of the important features of the state support mission is getting the state governments to develop and create their own institutions of transformation, very much like NITI. If you're going to move from planning more to development strategy, every state needs to have a state institute for transformation, which is helping plan ahead for inclusive growth. What is the GDP target? Uh, what are the means to achieve it? What is the focus? What are the resources for infrastructure? So many states, there are at least five or six states which have already created these institutions, including UP, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Assam. And so many of these states are moving towards that. We are working on a sort of whole of government, whole of NITI approach, focus areas being, you know, our comparative advantages, digital, PPPs, uh, and the whole reform, the circular economy. So uh, we're working closely with the states, helping them develop their capacity, and then, of course, sharing this knowledge across the states so that they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, Ms. Ayer, you know, uh, the finance minister also spoke about an uh, issue that you brought up uh, in a conversation with me in Davos where you said that you would like India to aspire to become the value inc of the world. In that context, uh, the budget has announced launching a new program to push uh, research and innovation. Of course, we're still waiting for more clarity on what this will exactly mean. They also want to get the private sector involved in this. Uh, I want to understand from you, what is it that you uh, expect uh, as part of this new program that has been announced by the government? Sure. You know, uh, we'll await the details, but research and development very much on the agenda. Niti, as you know, Shireen, has been pushing the frontier on innovation, technology, digital, blockchain, etc. And then, of course, as you know, when we discussed in Davos, we spoke about India, you know, becoming the global value chain hub. The PLI scheme, you know, is very much pushing the frontier on creating global champions. It's very much under implementation. We already have, uh, you know, more than, I think, 2 lakh uh, crore in terms of sales, investment of more than 45,000, more than 3 lakh jobs created. So I think uh, that's one major thrust towards making India the premier global value chain hub. And, of course, research and development is going to be a key part of that. Ms. Ayer, before I let you go, you know, because uh, so much of the budget was focused on the key priority of green growth. Uh, and in that context, uh, I want to understand whether there is now clarity uh, on the fame subsidy scheme continuing. There was no mention of it in the budget. The sun sets on that in FY24, uh, you know, sorry, in 2024. Uh, what should we expect? Is, is it likely to continue in its current avatar, a different avatar, or is it time for the sun to set? Well, on green growth, Shereen, as the FM mentioned, 
two or three key thrust areas, you know, which are very much uh, priority. She announced, the, she spoke about the Green Hydrogen Mission, which is planning 5 million tons, uh, you know, by 2030. That's a major thrust towards clean and green energy. She also spoke about life, lifestyle for the environment, which is more about getting individuals and communities to act on climate. And then, of course, there was a whole uh, series of renewable energy announcements and, and bioenergy. She spoke about Gobardhan, uh, where, where uh, an amount of, I think, eight or 9,000 crores have been allocated to set up more than 7,000 of these community biogas plants. So there's a big thrust on renewable energy that will continue. And I think India's climate commitments, our NDCs, are perhaps one of the few in the world where we are actually walking the talk. Right, uh, Mr. Ayer, uh, it's always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us to take us through what you make of the union budget that's been delivered by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, an inclusive budget that addresses, uh, 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 that has a bottom-up approach and addresses different constituencies from cooperative federalism uh, to aspirational districts and, of course, you, uh, the NITI working very closely with states through the state support mission uh, to try and ensure that states move on the path uh, of uh, reform as well. Always a pleasure. Appreciate you joining us. That is the CEO of the NITI Aayog. We are going to take a break. We haven't taken one in a long time. Uh, but uh, remember, stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. We continue our coverage here. More budget makers, more news makers, more opinion makers coming up right after this very short break.